This week on Tech Fix, we're taking a closer look at one of the most overlooked systems on the truck. That is, until it starts throwing warnings. Let's talk TPMS, the Tire Pressure Monitoring System. We'll break down what it does, how it works, the most common issues, and what both drivers and technicians can actually control. On top of that, we'll cover range extenders, sensor life, and how Volvo Tech Tool ties it all together. All of the information in this episode comes straight from CBR 2412. The TPMS, or Tire Pressure Monitoring System, is designed with three goals in mind. Safety, fuel economy, and longer tire life. Every wheel-mounted sensor constantly tracks real-time pressure and temperature, sending that data directly to the instrument cluster and the secondary information display, or SID. This keeps drivers informed and helps prevent costly roadside problems before they happen. When something isn't right, the system generates clear alerts. These alerts include low, extreme low, or high pressure warnings. For high temperature alerts, a warning is triggered any time a tire exceeds 194 degrees Fahrenheit, giving drivers and technicians crucial safeguard against heat-related failures. And finally, sensor faults or low battery warnings. It's important to note that with this new system, each sensor is mounted directly to the wheel using a hollow screw. Legacy system used a bulky worm drive clamp. Torque is absolutely critical here. If the sensor isn't secured properly, the truck will throw a wheel position fault. The TPMS relies on four core components. One wheel sensor per tire, a central TPMS control unit, range extenders, which are mandatory on the all new Volvo VNL. However, the number of range extenders will depend on the truck configuration. And last, the VMCU and CCIOM, which sends information directly to the dashboard. Oh, and because cybersecurity is a major concern in the trucking industry, this wireless gateway includes built-in tamper protection, ensuring the data sent from each tire can't be compromised. Here's how it all works behind the scenes. Each sensor broadcasts data every 10 seconds while driving. When the truck is stationary, that interval shifts to once every 60 seconds. If rapid deflation is detected, the broadcast rate jumps to once per second, ensuring the system immediately communicates critical changes. The result? If something goes wrong, you're gonna know about it in real time. Each wheel sensor is more than just a pressure gauge. It tracks pressure, temperature, its own unique ID, and even battery level. Battery life is solid, lasting between five and a half to six and a half years under normal use. But there's one key rule. Once that charge drops below 30%, that sensor needs to be replaced. Keep in mind, programming is required any time a sensor is changed or the tires are rotated. We'll talk a bit more about that here soon. Range extenders are small relay units that boost the RF signal from each tire, making sure data makes it all the way to the control unit. They're especially important on long wheelbase trucks, 6x2 and 4x2 configurations, multi-axle setups, and environments with heavy RF interference. They're mounted just ahead of the rear axle, one on each side, with a maximum of two per truck. This isn't just about boosting signal strength, it's about solving problems before they start. Also, it's important to note that the advanced TPMS system comes equipped with two range extenders, while the basic TPMS system only includes one. The TPMS is mostly automatic, but drivers still have some control. From the cab, they can adjust the reference pressure. That's the target cold inflation pressure, measured at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Making these adjustments helps cut down on false alerts caused by things like temperature swings or load changes. The system also allows drivers to adjust pressure thresholds per axle, but only under specific conditions. First, the truck must be parked. Also, it must be in pre-running mode. And last, the truck must be at a complete standstill. Here's the logic behind it. If the temperature drops by 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the software strategy will add about 5.08 to 5.8 PSI to the reference pressure. On the other hand, if the temperature rises by 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the software strategy will subtract that same amount. This keeps alerts accurate and avoids unnecessary warnings from everyday changes in weather or load. By default, the system is programmed with under pressure at 12% below the reference pressure and overpressure at 10% above the reference pressure. But there's flexibility built in. Under pressure can be adjusted anywhere between 8 to 12%, overpressure can be adjusted between 10 to 25%, and custom pressure warnings can be set across a wide range from 72 PSI and up to 145 PSI. The truck reference pressure itself is factory programmed based on the tires ordered with the truck. 
But if those tires are ever swapped for a different spec, drivers or owners can reprogram it so the system always reflects the correct PSI rating. All of the TPMS data comes together in the instrument cluster and the secondary information display, depending on how the truck is configured. From the driver's seat, you can see live pressure readings for each wheel, the reference pressure, which is your target cold inflation value, and tire temperature across all positions. The system also issues clear alerts. These alerts include low, high, or extreme pressure warnings and sensor or TPMS faults. Here's a key point. When a warning shows up, it isn't just a guess. It's backed by the system's logic, so drivers know they're looking at accurate, actionable information. Pairing happens automatically in the advanced TPMS anytime the tires are rotated, a sensor is replaced, or the software is flashed. However, for automatic pairing to be completed, several conditions have to be met. The truck must have been sitting still for about 15 minutes. That's going to put the sensors into programming mode. Then, the truck must be driven for at least 10 minutes at speeds above 19 miles per hour. This allows the sensors to auto-locate. In parallel, you want to make sure the differential lock is off. Last but not least, also while driving, make sure the liftable axle is in the lowered position. If those conditions aren't met, the system won't recognize the sensor, even if it's functioning. Now, here's the difference with the basic TPMS system. It doesn't learn automatically. Instead, pairing requires the driver or technician to select which sensor is being replaced or moved using the in-cab menus. Also, it's not limited to the cluster menu. You can do it through the digital information display with base audio or through the infotainment display with high audio. Both provide clear step-by-step on-screen instructions. Once the process is complete, the new values are stored instantly. There's no need to drive the truck to confirm or save them. For the most part, the TPMS runs on its own without the need for a technician's input. But when service is needed, here's where we step in. Tech tool can be utilized to read faults and diagnose system issues. It can also be used for parameter programming. Additionally, the handheld programming and diagnostic tool can be used to view sensor health, battery status, and live operating values to pinpoint exactly what's going on. Remember, if you see a battery level below 30%, Mark that sensor for replacement. One more thing, the control unit runs on 2.4 gigahertz and can support up to 20 sensors and five axles. That's a lot of coverage, but also a lot of potential for interference if things aren't set up correctly. Let's recap what we've covered. The TPMS keeps tires healthy, fuel costs down, and trucks safer on the road. Drivers can adjust reference pressures, but only while the truck is parked. Range extenders are critical and mandatory across all TPMS variants. Sensor battery life is strong, but still needs to be checked. Replace anything that shows less than 30% in the SID or tech tool. Tech tool is your go-to resource for diagnosing, pairing, and battery checks. At the end of the day, understanding how the TPMS works and just as important how it doesn't can save a technician from replacing good parts or overlooking real warnings. Remember, make sure your drivers know what they can adjust and what they shouldn't. We'll catch you next time on Tech Fix.